Hello productive people and welcome back to another Coda tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up recurring tasks in Coda. This has proven to be challenging yet doable in Notion, but it's pretty simple in Coda and there are some formulas involved and there's a little bit of background work, but this should take no longer than 10 minutes to set up your recurring tasks database. And let me show you what this will actually look like. So this is my recurring tasks database. And as you can see, I can set the occurrence here. So do I want this task here to recur yearly or do I want it to recur monthly? And if I mark as done, it simply adds the next date to my calendar with the task. So keep an eye on this number right here. It's gonna add 30 days to it for the monthly version. So 9-28-2022, when I mark it as done, changes to 10 28 2022 so it's a pretty nice system and it works well with the calendar as well as you can see this calendar holds all of the tasks that we've ever had and uh, as soon as i hit mark is done on one of these it'll add that next event to the calendar as well and then you can click into these and mark those as done that way as well i'll have a template down in the description and it will also be linked in the top pinned comment so if you want to add this to your coda workspace you can quickly do that by just selecting that template and then it'll uh, it'll populate that in if you hit the copy doc button in the upper right corner. And that's a pretty quick, easy way to get a hold of this template. I'm also gonna show you how to build this for those of you who are wondering how it's done. So let's get into building it. So we're just gonna start out with a blank Coda doc right here and I'm just gonna call this recurring tasks and we're gonna go with this icon right here. I'm also going to create a table. So I'm gonna hit slash and type table and we're gonna click that and we'll also call this one recurring tasks. Now for this name column, you're just gonna wanna name it task and you can enter the name of the task. So let's just say send reports complete taxes and water the plants. And then we're going to create another column that will be our select list. So I'm gonna hit new and we're gonna make sure that this is off right here. And then we're going to set the recurring time interval that we want. So we're gonna want weekly, monthly, and yearly. So I just put commas between those to separate them. And if I click away, now I have those in a nice list right here. And I can rename this column to recurring period. We're going to go with recurrence and then send reports monthly, complete taxes, yearly, water plants, weekly. And we're also going to set a due date column. So I'm going to click this drop down here and we're going to go to date. And for this, we're going to call it due date. Now I can set the day that I want to do this every month. So send reports is going to be the, let's just say the first of every month. Okay and complete taxes is going to be yearly. So in that case, we're going to say by April 15th of every year, and then water plants, this is weekly, right? So let's just say we're gonna do this every Monday. You can also keep this notes column in here if you want, and I like to call it details. And what that will do is it'll just allow you to open up your entire send reports item. So it's gonna open up everything from this row right here and it'll show you your recurrence, your due date, and you can also add some notes in here if you want as well. So that is nice. You can type as much as you want here and uh, you can really just fill this up with any details that you need. Now let's get into the actual formula that's driving this thing because right now it's not doing much other than telling us the current due date and when the next one needs to be formed. But how can we automate this a little bit? Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna create two new columns. The first one is going to be a select list and we're just going to put complete and incomplete. And this one is gonna be called status. Okay, so the status can either be incomplete or complete. Those are the only two options here. So status, that's good to go. Now we're also going to create a column called next due date. And that's just gonna be another date column. And this will be the column that determines which date comes after this based on whatever the recurrence is set to. So for this one, we need to use a basic formula. So I'm going to hit add formula and I'm going to type switch if and then we're going to put some parentheses. And here we're going to type in the condition and then if true and then the argument. So for this one, uh, the condition is if the recurrence equals weekly comma, if it's true, what's gonna happen? That's what this is asking. So if that's true, we're going to take the due date and we're gonna add days, we're gonna add seven days. 
So that is the formula to get monthly working properly, or I mean, excuse me, weekly working properly. Then we can also add another one. So I'm gonna put a comma after that, and we're gonna type recurrence equals monthly, comma, due date plus days. And for monthly, we're gonna go 30 days, okay? And then we have to add our final one, recurrence equals yearly, comma, due date, plus days and 365 for the days in the year and then we're going to hit enter and now this next due date is populating whatever comes after this day in terms of like yearly monthly or weekly so for weekly it's just going to add seven days to this date and you'll get the next due date here and same with uh, this one here but except it's going to do it for the next year so as you can see the only thing that's changed here is we've moved from 2022 to 2023 and on monthly, we have moved a month from April to April 1st to May 1st. So this is pretty good, but we need to add one more column that's going to allow us to mark these as done. So it'll actually be a button column. And I'm gonna set these to incomplete just for now. And we'll go to uh, create a new column. We'll do a button. And this button is gonna be labeled mark as done. And we're going to make it like blue with a check mark. And we can just keep it as button or we can call it mark as done. And this will be the button that kind of drives everything for you. So let's move this over here. Uh, actually, let's move it right there. And then at this point, you can actually hide these columns if you want to. So you're just seeing the ones that you need to interact with. And if you don't need the details, you can hide that as well. So now it's a very simple setup, right? All you have to do is add the recurrence, add the due date, and then mark it as done when it's done. So we have to configure this button so that it actually takes those actions that I've just described. So in order to do that, you're gonna go into button options and then where it says action here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you hit use a formula. And then you can enter your formula here. This one's a bit complex, so just follow along. With this formula, we're going to need to add a row and we're also going to need to modify the row. So there are a few actions that we need to run here. So when you need to run multiple actions from a button, you can use this run actions command. So now that we have run actions in here, we can add row and the first thing we need to do is we need to add a row and we need to select the table that we're targeting so the table that we're targeting is this table right here and it's called recurring tasks so i'm just going to type in recurring tasks i can hit tab to enter that in and lock that in now for this next portion of the formula we have to add the column and then what the column value should be on the row that we are adding. So the column that we're selecting is gonna be tasks. So I'm gonna click on task right here, and then I'm going to add a comma, and we're gonna type in this row dot task. So now what that's saying is we're going to target the tasks table, and we're gonna take task, this column right here, and we're going to duplicate the value from the current row that we're in when we click that button. So if I hit mark is done, that's saying take this task column, and then copy send reports because we're targeting this row for that task. Next, we have to add column two. So this is a pattern right here, right? We start with the table, then we enter the column, the column value. Now we have to enter the second column and the second column value. So for this one, it's gonna be recurrence. So I'm gonna click on recurrence, comma, and we're just going to type in this row dot recurrence because that will stay the same when you duplicate it the recurrence value. Next, we're going to add a comma here and we're going to target the due date. So the due date is going to be a little bit different, right? Uh, the due date needs to change. So for the due date, we're just going to type in due date because we have to select the column that we want to target. So let's just get due date in there. And then I'm gonna add a comma here. And for the due date, we're actually just going to simply type in this row dot next due date. So what that's saying is for the due date column of the column we're creating, we're gonna take the next due date, which is that other column that we created. Now we have to set the status. So we want the status to not be complete or anything else. We want the status to be incomplete. So I'm just going to enter incomplete. Now that this is done, this should be working properly, but then we have to actually modify the row that we're in. If we're marking it as done, we want this task to disappear. So in order to do that, you're just going to go outside of this parenthesis right here and hit comma. And then we're going to do modify rows. And for this, we're just gonna select the row that we wanna modify, the column and the column value. So this row, comma, 
this row dot status comma and we're going to put complete now if i hit enter as you can see the button is blue which is a good sign that means it's most likely working pretty well so now on this send reports here i can hit mark is done and it adds a new task in here which is great right and if i open up the other columns let's just see what's going on with the other columns now so as you can see this has been marked as complete and this new one that got created is marked as incomplete so if you want the completed tasks to disappear from your task list, you can hit filter and then add a filter status. And we can say status is incomplete. So it's only going to show us what's incomplete on this list. So every time that we mark something is done, it disappears out of our table and we get a new task. Now, if you wanted to view this as a calendar, well, let's first hide these extra columns here. If you wanted to view it as a calendar, you would just come down here, type slash calendar, hit enter, and then we can select our recurring tasks table. And you can just call this calendar of tasks. And then from there, we can hide the title and we can go into calendar display. Now, what it's gonna do by default is it's going to pull the due date and the next due date because the logic in Coda thinks, oh, you have two dates, you're probably setting the due date and the next due date but we don't want a next due date we're just going to put none for that so that we don't get these like weird long uh tasks that span throughout multiple months we're just going to have uh due date as the start date and then if you look in your calendar you'll see that we have water plants right here and it's not going to show us the completed tasks because there's a filter on this. But if we wanted it to show both incomplete and complete, we could do that. You can then see that we have send reports on April 1st. But if we click into it, you'll see that it is indeed complete. I hope this video helps some of you guys out with your task lists. I'm going to be coming out with more videos around tasks in the coming future because I feel like a lot of people try to get their tasks into Notion or they try to get their tasks into coda and there are workarounds to get it to work like the one that i showed you in this video but there are also better applications that you can funnel your tasks into and then you can just focus on your tasks in something like sunsama for instance and i'm going to be coming out with a lot of sunsama tutorials soon but that's aside from the point i hope you guys did enjoy this video i hope you got something out of it and if you want to try this out you can again click the link in the description or the link in the top pinned comment you can get access to this table and play around with it yourself all right. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave a like. Comment below if you have any questions or remarks at all. Anything nice to say, anything bad to say. I welcome all of the feedback that we can get. And also uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. All right. See you guys in the next one.